How's it going, everybody? Jamie here. Really excited to share with you this four-on-four -four practice footage um, with um, girls where we're working on uh, two-man game, pairs offense on, on both sides simultaneously. It's really interesting. There's a ton of great stuff in here. Um, I would recommend you watch the off-ball two-man video uh, to get the big picture on all the things I'm talking about, but I'm going to dive into some great details on how the defense was playing things and why we will stick a pick, slip a pick, why we set seals and some really, really interesting stuff that was going on. So let's, let's uh, check it out. All right. So pass it across, slip a pick. So let's just check out why this works. W what I did here, first of all, I'm communicating and I'm saying, Hey, I'm picking for you. Come here, come here. I'm picking for you. And then I slip right through the gap just to see what happens. Well, what did happen? If you notice, um, if you notice, I engaged two defenders. They both went with me on the cut. Then they both released off of me. And then they went back to me. And that's how it works a lot of the time. You will engage two defenders on slips. And sometimes they'll both pick up the picker. And they'll, sometimes they'll both pick up the cutter. But sometimes they'll do both, which is really interesting. And it happens all the time. The second thing that's noteworthy is just the way that we're able to continue the motion going. A lot of times people will make a cut and, and then they won't cut again. If the, if the righties wanted to swing the ball to the lefties, they could because we have an outlet that can facilitate the swing, but the righties aren't ready. They're doing another action. So we are now coming right back to our action. 36 is ceiling for me. And then she's getting in the way and I'm popping out to facilitate that swing. And this is where you want to receive it. So many people will cut to the middle to receive the ball. And all it does is jam them up. We want to receive the ball on the wings so that we can attack the middle so that we can immediately get into our ball side actions. Um, and so that's why you want to try to receive the ball out here. Now I get it. The pick's coming up. I'm waiting for it. And we're seeing how they play it. I think I said something like repick, repick, repick. So let's go back. A repick is where you sort of fake your first pick and then you come back to set your second one. Now, a lot of times people slip picks automatically. But if a defender like this girl on ball is fighting through a pick and you slip it, you can see that it really doesn't do anything to the defense. What you have to do is be able to stick a pick if they're going to try to fight over. I also want you to notice that I give the ball up really early. You see where I gave it up? The reason why I did that is because moving the ball in the middle of two man games creates, turns an on ball picking situation into an off ball situation instantaneously. And with 36 sticking the pick, it allows me to use this in a give and go setting instead of in a dodging setting. And had the ball not been bobbled, I did have a nice step on my defender and I think I would have been able to draw two players off ball. Here, now I'm saying up pick slip, up pick slip. I'm asking 36 to set the up pick and slip through the gap. And I'm trying to engage two defenders with my posture. Do you see how I'm, I'm trying to, can you see how I'm calling her? And then I'm also selling that I'm going to cut to my right, trying to engage the low defender, but also to try to maintain the engagement of my own defender. So she goes through, they don't really switch. Nothing happens. Really, probably a feed shouldn't have gone and we should have just continued with our motion. Here, I'm doing a pass down and I'm sealing down. Now, there's a lot of reasons to seal, but do you see right here that we're able to use a seal, which is essentially picking off the switch and it becomes a double pick to be able to open her up. This is also a seal and bump situation where I'm able to seal my own defender and chip the other defender with a bee sting. Lots of different ways to seal and bump. This is a bee sting is one way to do it. Um, why do we seal? Well, when you know teams that don't want to switch, you can just become a double pick. And then you can, if you, if I saw that this girl was going to miss the pick, I could release off of my seal 
and get in the way of the on-ball defender. So seals are incredibly effective. And the last point I want to make about seals is simply that when the defense is really sagging in a lot, it's a really good time to seal because you can create these types of angles. In box across, they seal on their pass down pick downs all the time. All right, so let's talk about this situation. Here, we're, we're talking about a defense that doesn't want to switch. You can see the girl on ball is, is actually peeking over her shoulder right now. You can see she's looking for where the pick is. Look at my posture. Look how I'm selling that I'm going to go right. The girl is setting the pick to the right. And then I refuse the pick or reject the pick and just split opposite. And then left to left really wasn't so much of a split, but you can see what I'm talking about of attacking opposite. Anytime a defense is trying not to switch and try to fight over a pick or under a pick, they have to see where the pick is when they're taking a look, when they're overplaying you there, you can just simply dodge opposite and it's really effective. That posture would work right here too. For the cutter, you still want to use that posture. She could be selling as if she was, was going to go to the right, and she could use my seal. This is an off-ball seal. Now, why do we seal off-ball? For the same reasons. When the defense is sagging in, it allows us to eliminate the potential of a switch, and a lot of times it allows you to pick two players because I can release off this seal and get in the way. Now, I would say this, this cutter would probably be better off if she was coming tighter, selling to the right, or using some kind of a rocker or hesitation to try to get her defender chipped by my little bee sting. Ball moves again, and there's another slip. So they're fighting through. The slips aren't going to work, right? Why? They're not going to work. They're not going to work to get me open anyway, because this defender is playing me as if there's no pick there. When you slip, there essentially is no pick there. So no big deal though. We don't care if it doesn't work out because we're just gonna continue the motion. So I make a little move, it's not there, step back. And now we reset. And I think what I'm looking to do here again is swing it right in the middle of a two-man game. Now, I love swinging it in the middle of two-man games, especially if I can engage two defenders. So I have my defender engaged. If I could have done a better job engaging this low defender, the picker could have gone right through this thing, but I can still be looking for my give and go as well. So moving the ball in the middle of two man games is incredibly impactful. Now you can see right here, the ball bobbles, but if it didn't, I would be calling 36 back to say, come back, do it again, do it again, come back, come back. And that's what I'm doing right now. Stick the pick, stick the pick. And so now check out my posture. I'm asking this girl to come. I know they're trying not to switch. I'm saying pick for my top side, swing pick, swing pick, stick the pick. And I'm selling right. I'm using a little hesitation move. It kind of looks like a dodge, really. It looks like the same left to left dodge I did when I was refusing a pick. And I'm able to bring her, my defender right off and make them switch. Now, why is this impactful? We didn't really get that open. But as soon as you start getting them to switch, then they're going to start not knowing whether they should switch or stay and your slips will start to get wide open. On ball here, I'm waiting for a, I'm waiting for a swing pick. Keep it going again. So I'm sealing, looking for a little bee sting. Do you see how uh, this, uh, the dodger here, the cutter, I should say, could have used a little bit of a hesitation or a rocker and she could have curled right around this thing. Her man is trying to fight over and she is being chipped. She's getting chipped, but the Dodger didn't quite take a, a tight enough curl. Although she's open, her stick's open. They probably could have fed that. The way we're occupying defenders is pretty awesome too. So now let's talk about swing picks. I'm saying swing pick, swing pick. So I am having my picker make it look like she's setting it for my right hand. I'm making it look like I'm going to my right hand with my posture, with where I'm looking. And then she's jumping over to set it for my left and I'm taking it to my left and we bring her over nice and easy. This is what I mean by inviting somebody over a pick. We don't wanna run her into the pick. And frankly, we gotta be careful that we're not gonna get a blind pick call on these. I think she should probably I might need to wait a little bit. She might need to set it a little farther away. But this swing pick idea 
where they just get slightly chipped is really impactful. And it's a great way to go against teams that don't want to switch and they want to fight over. Jump over, set it for the other side. Chipper, don't let her run into the picker. It will be a blind pick. And we've got a nice little um, opportunity. All right, so now I'm saying I'm ceiling, I'm ceiling, come over the top. She slips through it, no big deal. Come back, come back, come back. So this probably isn't open. But what, if you listen to the raw footage on this, I'm just going to be like, come back, come back, come back. Because as soon as we realize we're not open, let's not jam up the middle and continue our cuts. Granted, she's feeding it. So she kind of had to, but if that makes sense. So here, let's take a look at this situation now. I'm ceiling. The cutter is cutting tight, but her man is switching. So when you see, and her man is going under this pick. Do you see it? She's not fighting over it now. So when you see them do that, then we just want to pop. And we'll see who, if this girl fights over this way and this girl's going that way, then I'll be open on my slip. So it's really, really important that we, we don't stare at the ball, but rather we see our defender as the cutter here. So if she was looking at her man, she would see that she was going under it and she could step right out. She might get a shooting space or whatever. Once you recognize you're open, then you look for the ball. Follow me on that? Don't stare at the ball because you can't stare at the ball and see the defense at the same time. But what you can do is see the defense and then realize when you're open and then find where the ball is. So here we've got another situation where it's a nice little swing pick. She's overplaying me a little bit. The pick's going to my left. Um, hesitation move coming off of it. Uh, I probably should have swung that thing right away. And the picker probably should have gone right through that gap. You see how I, I kind of have two girls occupied here. So if I can swing it to an open outlet across the field and the picker can cut to the net, we will have an easy little nation's look. Ball moves and then right back, immediate actions. So when it's not there, watch how this give and go gets open. In instantly, there's more actions to be had. Now it's like the ball swings right back. Immediately, immediately I'm coming up to pick and she's dodging. And then we kind of run into each other, no big deal. Ball swings again. And we just keep the ball in the motion moving. Here I'm ceiling and look at this great read by this girl. So I seal, I, she's, her man's going under and she pops and that's awesome. It's really, really good reading of the defense. So let's check out this. I think I'm telling her to get, give me a swing pick. I want my left hand, give me a swing pick and I'm getting jammed up pretty good. So I use a rocker to be able to come off this pick. I've got two players engaged with me. I'm looking to swing it. My man actually leaves me, the picker cuts, she's open. Maybe I could have gotten if I could have maintained the engagement of my own defender a little bit longer, I could have really had both girls on me and I would have been able to really open up that cutter on that nation's look. But it was a decent look. It's a good idea. You know, it doesn't matter that a lot of these didn't work out great because we're just practicing. So here's a seal. Both players go under. She should probably be popping right now, right? You see that? But she cuts into the into the uh, switch, I guess. Let's see, was that a switch or did her man go under? No, her man just met her on the other side, right? Now, same thing's about to happen. Watch my posture. I'm selling cut underneath and I'm popping out. That is an example of using posture to try to manipulate a defender. But it didn't really do much other than get me open. Now I'm slipping, mixing it in. Why does this work so well sometimes? They, they've been not switching on picks, but I'm communicating, I'm getting their attention. I'm saying, come this way, I'm picking, I'm picking. And then when I slip, you can see how my defender would have been in position, but they stayed with me. The on-ball defender is too low and the Dodger actually had a decent little angle. Now, immediately we're back into action. She moves it. I'm immediately saying, seal here, seal here, seal, 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 seal. And I'm trying to like create an, a, a little 
almost like a redodge off ball. So what do I mean by that? She's sealing, I'm popping up, I'm looking for the ball, I'm showing my stick, I'm getting my defender to think that she's got the angle on me and then I'm turning the corner. I'm sealing again, I'm saying, use me, I'm sealing, I'm sealing. There's a little bee sting. She could have cut a lot tighter. Now I'm saying seal for me, seal for me, seal for me. And we're just consistently working on these motions. Posture again, she's overplaying. She's trying not to switch. So I'm selling right. This is an off ball swing pick. I drew two players. She's getting open on her cut. Hey, even if we don't get open, we are, we are engaging and occupying so well. Ball moves over. So uh, this is just an example of how you can use a hesitation move to, to bring somebody over the top of a pick. And it's also an example of inviting a defender over. I didn't try to run my defender into the pick. I wanna bring her with me so that either I draw a double team or I'm walking straight in, but she is in a permanently trailing position when I can get this step because she's getting chipped and I'm not. And that's how inviting people over a pick works. Check out the posture on this. So I am selling cut underneath. She goes under and now I pop, receive it. And now I'm in a really good position to try to dodge. Although I get stripped because I was trying to fake her with a little behind the back fake. She did a nice job. Um, you're going to see a lot more of these postures setting up, setting up defenders. Nonstop movement, both sides. I know I'm really sort of just focusing on all the action on our side right now, but there's just as much good stuff happening on the other side. So right here, mixing it in. I, I've been sealing a lot. So they've been kind of getting used to the fact that the the cutter's been getting open and they're a little bit more inclined to switch and I'm calling, calling, calling. Then I slip through and they both go to me. So this is the refusing the pick again. So they're expecting the top side. They know I'm a lefty. I look it off and I just split. The other thing to notice too is just the way that hesitations and look back fakes and back and backhand pumps can help set up your ability to get to the net. Seal, 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 bee sting. She could have turned that a lot tighter. Instantly, we don't have it. I'm calling her right back. Seal, 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 seal. Pick here, pick slip, down pick slip. I'm not sure what I'm saying. You can listen to it, but you can see that I'm in this little pocket of space right here. And it's just, over and over again, I'm sealing. Now you can see they're, she, they're going under the pick now, so she should be popping, right? She ends up running into the coverage, that's okay, but that's what happens when you don't watch the defender. Ball moves, now she's picking again. Nothing's there, I'm trying to get her to pick for my left hand. Uh, now I move it. You guys, anytime you're being played real aggressively, it's a lot of times it's easier to do your give and go off the pick than it is to dodge off the pick because they will relax is not check you as hard once you've given it up. And then all of a sudden you've got position back again. A pick slip, a pick slip, a pick slip is what I'm saying. I'm saying a pick slip. I'm trying to sell with my posture that I'm gonna cut hard, trying to engage two defenders and get her open through the gap. No big deal, it doesn't work. We're coming right back immediately. Look how quickly we're going to the next play. She's not open, I'm not open. Now I'm facilitating a swing. She's coming right back. She could she could be getting open for me to throw it down or she could be coming up for my up pick. Now I'm sealing again. We got a little beast thing. She could have had it. Now I'm saying down pick slip, down pick slip, down pick slip. Ball swings. Now I'm waiting for it. Swing pick, swing pick I'm saying. Come off of it and she's got the step to the net. Oh man, if I should have passed, I could have passed this across right now and she was cutting to the net, we would have had a nice little nations. So notice how I'm the posture, I'm selling right, I'm selling right. And then she jumps over to the left and I get a little hesitation, bring her through. 
facilitate that ball swing on the other side. Nothing there, no big deal. Carry it down, repick for the top side. Give it up early. Look for the give and go. Look at that. Giving it up early here, you guys. Right here. I could have dodged off this. But when I didn't, it gave me a much cleaner go. Now I got two players on me. And I'm open. Do you see how 48 here is cutting to the middle and receiving the ball right there? This is part of what I was talking about earlier. You don't really want to receive it there because you got nowhere to go. You're running into traffic and you're jamming it up and you can't feed me. So if she was catching this thing wide on the wing, kind of equidistant to where I am right now, I, I, I could have been wide open on this cut. And so could have the picker. Seal down, bee sting, come back. It's nonstop non-stop movement. This is what you should be looking for off the ball. Now she's cutting through the gap, I'm cutting, and I've got a great angle. I mean, this stuff is so cool. So they try, they're trying not to switch and they're running around pickers and that's why I had kind of have the angle, but we don't have it, let's facilitate that swing. I would say she's catching it maybe a little more to the middle than she'd want. It's all right, we keep the motion going. Hesitation, move. So on the other side, it's gonna happen where both players are cutting. You see how open that backside up pick slip got? She calls for it. I, I, I just didn't see it, I should, probably should have. Um, probably looking to swing it, now we're just moving again. Continuous, nonstop movement. Down pick slip, down pick slip, down pick slip. That's what I'm asking her to do. I'm selling it. I'm trying to engage her defender with my posture right now. I'm trying to step back to maintain the engagement of mine. And look where I'm receiving the ball on the swing. Wide enough on the wing that we've got angles to go. So this is a nation's look. And this is like really what you're hoping for in, in your team play, which is that you've got, you're facilitating a swing. They've got action that we can't see. On the, back, on the ball side right now, the ball comes to me. I can see already that she's going to be open and can one time a pass in there on a nation's luck. Cut. Nothing's there. Throw it over. This is a really interesting look that I just kind of figured out. It happened kind of by mistake, but she's picking from my top side. The girl's overplaying it, so I refuse it. And then I roll right back and it turns into almost like, I'm, I'm calling this a uh, refusal repick. I refuse to pick and then repick for it. Interesting, terrible shot. Up pick slip, up pick slip, I'm trying to tell her. Down pick slip, down pick slip. I'm trying to engage defenders. Maybe I was trying to pick for her. We almost like ran into each other. That's okay. It happens. The thing is, you guys, if you keep the motion going like this, eventually the defense is going to screw it up. If we screw it up along the way, no big deal if, if we should have stuck it when we slipped it or vice versa. But it's a really big deal when the defense messes it up because then it's a goal. Hesitation move. Um, this is an example of when you're being overplayed, you can use a rocker to – to get yourself off of a pick. And you can see I was able to engage too. I also call this a hip swivel where you're going with your hips open facing and you just turn them. For some reason, it creates a hesitation. I learned that from listening, uh, watching basketball. Steve Nash used to do this all the time. All right, so this is an example of refusing a pick off ball. So this girl's fighting over this pick and I can tell she's overrunning it. So I go opposite, don't get open, but that stuff is there a lot. Ceiling, 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 ceiling. She's running into the, into the switch, you see that? So she was, I'm ceiling for her, her defender's going under, she's open right there. When you pop out, it gives you wind up opportunities. It gives you shooting space opportunities. Lots of good stuff can happen. Good defense here, but um, I was thinking about this pick angle. Um, really interesting. When I think about teams that want to fight over picks, I'm thinking that if she sets it even wider, that it might be even easier for me to invite this girl over the pick or to cut back against the green. You know what I mean? It's kind of counterintuitive to think that you would want to set it wider than that because setting it wider 
is kind of not at the right angle for me to score, but if she's a step wider, this girl might have a harder time getting through it. And I might either be able to cut back to my left and refuse it or, or, or invite her over the top of this thing. I did have two players on me and I was just sloppy with my stick work, but good defense. Really good action off ball here. She's coming up and saying, up, pick slip, up, pick slip. I'm selling cut. They both go with her. Leaves me wide open, opportunity to wind up. That's what I was talking about, reading screens, off ball. Swing pick, move it. Oh, man, I could have probably just taken it right in here. Posture, selling right. She slips the pick. This is what happens when you start setting enough picks is they start not knowing whether they should slip, pick, switch or not. You can see that they, one girl switched and one girl, one girl didn't really. And it probably would have been an opportunity for me to run right in and score it or draw a shooting space or some kind. Now we're immediately, the ball moves and immediately we're getting into the next motion. I'm sealing for you, I'm sealing for you. And we just keep communicating it like that. Seal for me, seal for me. I sell go, she goes underneath. Look at that, look at how I was able to do that. Now, why does that work? Because I'm selling cut right here. She's trying to see the pick, so she can't even look at me. She thinks I'm going over the top of this thing. And because I was so tight to the pick and because I was selling go so hard, she decided it'd be easier to meet me on the other side of the pick, but I re I'm recognizing it. And now I'm right into a wind up situation. I love this. Um, underhand, hard pump, face dodge. A pick slip, a pick slip, a pick slip. So this one, I kind of stuck the pick because they've been switching so much. Cut, cut right, cut right, I'm saying, cut right, cut right. And I could have been open. Seal for me, seal for, seal for me. Give it up early, look for the give and go. You guys, the give and goes are so there. When they don't want to switch and you give it up, they will relax and it's easier to bring them off the pick. And right now she's thinking about switching, but the other girl is not. And that's just simply because they've been trying not to switch. Then all of a sudden she is switching. And that's what happens sometimes when teams are going to switch and you turn it into an off ball play, they don't switch. And sometimes it's the opposite. But you can see here, the righties are jamming themselves up by flying into the middle. You just don't want to fly into the middle unless you think you're going to score. Cutting in to receive the ball to shoot is fine. That's great. But when you're looking to be a facilitator of a ball swing, it's not great. So here, getting overplayed again, selling it, refusing it. Defense plays pretty well. And this is sort of the power of post-ups and fakes. Seal. Beasting, goal. Up pick slip, up pick slip. I cut back door, it's not there. Come right back, come back, come back. Nope, the ball swings. The communication is so key though, you guys. I saw Lyle Thompson do this once. Down pick slip, down pick slip, down pick slip. Oh, here's another example of off ball pick refusal. She's fighting over the pick, so I go opposite. So all of the same stuff works. So you see this, I'm selling, I'm trying to sell, go to engage the top girl. She goes through the gap and you know we don't quite get there, but it's not a bad look. That's the way you can, I mean, think about it. If you can engage two players off ball, how huge is that? So these defenders are playing us in a way that's probably not gonna happen that much because they're playing us with zero ability to help off ball. Um, there's, they're, they're face guarding the off ball side. So obviously that's pretty good for the ball side, but it's also pretty good practice to kind of learn how to go over, to go about it. So I'm saying stick your pick, stick your pick. I'm using that same little rocker 
it, it's funny how when they're playing you hard, you might just be using the exact same moves and postures that you would use if you were dodging. Again, trying to engage two players. I mean, doesn't it doesn't this look like I have the ball on my stick as I'm making this little hesitation move coming top side over the top? Continuous motion. Uh, getting tired. Can't handle. Seal. B stick. Wide open. Oh, she had it. Swing. Down to you. Seal. Okay, come off of it. Slip it. Move it. You just kind of keep it going. You just keep going with all of these motions, mixing in when you know that they're trying to fight through picks and fight over picks, you stick your pick more often, you use your seals maybe a little bit more often. So you can kind of see what I'm talking about. There's just so much good stuff in here to be able to work together. And if you just kind of keep doing it over and over and over again, keep your spacing, Keep your distance. This was a really nice one. So watch this off ball pick. No switch. Goal. Oh, look at the slip. They, they don't want to switch, but once you do this enough, they kind of end up having to. Two girls go with the cutter. Leaves the picker wide open. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, some really great footage in there. Um, I think it'd be really helpful to um, listen to this, but then to go through and just watch the raw footage yourself. It'll be, the, the image will be sharper down below in the raw footage piece, um, but this part will really uh, lend itself to helping you understand what we're talking about. All right, enjoy.